You know, as much as I love horror movies, they ruin everything in real life. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, can't go to Texas now. Wrong turn, can't go down any back roads. Hostel, can't go abroad. And now Hatchet has ruined Mardi Gras. Thanks, Hatchet. Welcome everybody to my second official patron sponsored movie review. This one is coming from Kelly Farrell, one of my newest Patreon subscribers. I actually did a shout out video for her so you guys already know who she is. She chose Hatchet as her patron sponsored video. So I'm looking forward to diving into this, possibly the entire series if she wants me to continue with that. So let's start with the original Hatchet. So Hatchet tells the story of a group of people who go on a ghost tour boat ride through the swamps of Louisiana during Mardi Gras and when the ship crashes, they get marooned out in the swamps in the territory of the legendary Victor Crowley. So it's kind of a funny thing about Hatchet because this movie, I had heard some sprinklings of some good things about it. I've heard some people say that it's not so great. I've heard some things in the middle. So very mixed reception for these movies. And I've always known that it was intended to be a throwback to the old 80s slashers, which is probably what kept me from watching this movie for the longest time. Because as a huge fan of that 80s slasher era, I am very, very gun shy to experience something that's supposed to be like a tribute or trying to get back to that era because it's so hard, damn near impossible, to capture what made those movies great. And funny enough, whenever Kelly sent me that she wanted me to do Hatchet, I had actually got these three movies to watch like a week prior to that. So perfect timing on your part, Kelly. So the basic idea behind this movie, Hatchet, is a throwback to classic 80s slasher movies. And it's brought to you by the director, Adam Green. If you've seen the movie Frozen, he also directed that. And he's done three of these Hatchet movies. And Adam Green's directing is actually my first positive of Hatchet because this guy, you can tell the movie is made by slasher fans for slasher fans. It delivers on a lot of the style, the directions, and even the tropes of the old classic 80s slasher movies, and they're utilized well. It's not utilized in an annoying way where it's like, oh, these fucking tropes all again. It kind of has fun with it and plays on it a little bit. It knows that you have knowledge of slasher movies while you're watching, or at least it hopes you have that knowledge that we actually pick up on the jokes that are in this movie, and it just delivers on a lot of that classic appeal of what made those 80s slashers great. And what I like about the movie is that, in the end, it knows what it wants to be, it sets out to be that, and it succeeds. And it doesn't try to be anything else than what it wants to be. Another big positive of this movie is that I actually really like the legend of Victor Crowley. I like the backstory. You get to see a little bit of it here and there, but it's really tragic. Basically, you've got this father who has this deformed child. He hides him out into the swamps in this little shack in the middle of Louisiana. He lives a secluded life just to raise and love his son and wants to be left completely alone. And of course, the damn townspeople, you get these kids that find out about Victor Crowley, they go and they try to play a prank and try to throw firecrackers into this hut, end up setting a fire, the dad comes in trying to save Victor Crowley, chopping at the door with the axe, accidentally chops his son right in his skull and kills him. Tragic as fuck. And it's that tragedy that brings a small amount of sympathy to the character of Victor Crowley, much in the vein of Jason Voorhees. Yeah, you died because people weren't watching you when they were supposed to be watching you. I'd probably want to kill a few motherfuckers too. And that's always a cool element that especially a lot of those 80s slashers really nailed is having a cool backstory and an origin for your killer. And another huge element of those classic slashers, something that is really missing from slashers of today, the few that we actually do get that this movie nails, is the gore and the creative kills. Because to me, that is one of the most important pieces of a slasher. Yes, you want a great villain. Yes, you want a cool story. Yes, you want a great cast and good acting. But if there's not gore and there's not some creative kills, you ain't got shit. And holy fuck does Victor Crowley know how to kill some people. <laughs> And going along with a lot of those kills, I thought the practical effects on a, quite a few of those kills were pretty damn good and pretty impressive. Another very important aspect to horror movies, especially slashers, that this movie also has plenty of, is nudity. Call me perverted, 
it's very important to see titties in a slasher. And it was actually kind of smart the way that the movie wrote in its own way to consistently have nudity throughout. You got these two characters and this cameraman who's basically putting on this Girls Gone Wild Louisiana version the entire runtime, even throughout whenever Victor Crowley's actually somewhat looming around them and they kind of start getting scared, you still get a few flash scenes. Creative writing right there. And going along with the legend of Victor Crowley, I actually think that his setting, his territory, the Louisiana swamps, in the rain, at night, is a pretty damn scary setting for a horror movie. I mean, just think about if you were capsized from this boat and you're walking around the swamps of Louisiana at night in the dark, that's some scary shit. And good creative writing is the one element of this movie that I was most worried about and most relieved at how actually smartly written this movie was. It's one thing to have a horror movie or a slasher that entertains you with gore and kills and nudity, but if it doesn't have really entertaining scenes and characters in between those carnage candy or nudity candy scenes, then the movie is not going to rise, it's not going to be memorable, and it's not going to stand the test of time. Well, the writing in this is actually pretty damn good. It's nothing that's earth shattering. It's nothing that's gonna rock your socks or like win Oscars or anything. But as far as entertaining you, as far as putting characters in front of you and giving them dialogue to keep the movie moving along at a good pace, to make you buy into these characters' relationships with each other, whether or not they are romantically interested in each other or they're just best friends looking for a ghost tour in the middle of the night, you buy into all that because of the smart writing. And all of the characters within that writing are actually pretty entertaining and mostly well acted especially for what a slasher requires. Ben and Marcus are basically your main characters, they're best friends, one of them has just got out of a really bad relationship, the other one is in Louisiana to party for Mardi Gras, and the good friend in Marcus basically takes Ben out to do what Ben wants to do, go on this ghost tour in the middle of the night instead of partying in Mardi Gras. That's a friend right there. Buddy, you're gonna be so psyched you did this. I think I'd rather skin my own dick. And these two are actually really entertaining and very believable as friends. Their relationship, their dialogue with each other, you can buy these two hanging out for a very long time. And amongst those two characters, to me, Marcus definitely had the best lines in the movie. They gave him the best jokes, he had a lot of really good comedic timing. You'll recognize the actor as the guy who played all the token black guy characters in the 90s romantic comedies and teen movies. He even played the token black guy, that was the name of the character, in Not Another Teen Movie. So you're gonna recognize this guy and his comedic timing has not shied from his movies in the 90s. Perry Shen was actually also a really fun character. I've heard that he's in all the other movies, so I'm curious to see exactly how they reincarnate him or how they explain him coming back because, you know, spoiler alert, he does die. It's a slasher, pretty much everybody does. It's not really that big of a spoiler. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> That's right, yeah, you see? Now, not one but two ghosts, yeah, I told y'all. Isn't that just a chemical reaction from the water and the gases? No, 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 man, it's the ghost, look. Nah, bruh. Those are marsh vapors. I've seen this on TV. Hell, man, why'd you not come then? But Perry Shen was really entertaining because he's kind of, he starts off as being this really sleazy guy who's trying to put on this really fake Louisiana accent and you can tell it's fake, but it's comedic in the way that it's fake. And then whenever he goes full on Asian, it's also hilarious because it also sounds fake, but it also sounds believable that maybe this is really the way that guy talks. What did you just call me? You heard me. Say it again. I say it all night, you fake Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker. I think I hear a little emerald, you confused wannabe. Why'd you just get off my case, asshole? It was an accident for Christ's sake. And Mary Beth was also a really interesting character. You know, she's the one who's kind of shady, the one that you're not quite sure about. She's on this ghost tour, but she seems like she's got ulterior motives. And whenever her motives are revealed, not only does it bring a nice little human element to the story and to the motivations of these characters getting to Victor Crowley, but it also changed up the character flow a lot because she's the one who you feel like would put up a fight. She's the one that you feel like would survive this situation. She's the one that you're thinking, okay, stick with her, because she seems like she knows what the fuck she's doing, versus everybody else who's the typical slasher victims running around doing a lot of stupid shit. And in your supporting cast, I was actually kind of surprised to find out how much horror movie alumni stars in this movie. You get Freddy Krueger himself, Robert Anglin as a character, you get the great Tony Todd, and of course Kane Hodder is playing Victor Crowley himself, as well as Victor Crowley's father in the flashback sequences. And I was actually surprised at how many genuinely good moments of humor were in this movie.
The comedy writing that is in here, that is in the dialogue, especially by the character Marcus, is pretty smartly written. Not every joke lands. There's actually some pretty bad ones here and there. But for the most part, I'd say 70% of the jokes land pretty well, and it does really change up the pace. It does lighten the movie up so that they can jump you later on with some tense scenes. And the last positive that I actually really want to nail down without talking too specific about it is that I feel like this movie really nails the ending because one of my biggest pet peeves with slasher movies horror movies in general, but mostly slasher movies, is whenever they try to have the whole the evil lives on ending where the killer's still alive, or they give you one last scare, just like the scene in Scream that they make fun of, or this is the time for the one last scare. Ah! Scenes like that drive me nuts because nine out of 10 of them are so fucking lazy that they take you out of the movie completely. You watch the ending and you're like, Jesus, could you at least put some effort into that? Put some reasons why the fucking killer survived? Give me a motivation to want to come back to this because that was just bullshit. Hatchet doesn't have that kind of ending. It actually has one of those evil live on endings where you're like, hey, that was pretty fucking cool. Let me see the next chapter. But unfortunately, despite all of those things that this movie nails down really well, there's definitely some negatives about Hatchet. First and foremost, although I like the legend of Victor Crowley, although I like the ferocity of the character, although I'm a fan of Kane Hodder, although I love the gore and the creative kills that this character unleashes upon everybody in this movie, I don't like the design of the character at all. I don't like the look of him. I don't think he's scary. I think the first scene when you actually see Victor Crowley is ridiculous. I think that scene falls so flat. The effect that they were going for of the legend showing himself didn't nail that at all. All that smart writing that I was talking about, all that really good humor, there's some huge missteps in there as well. There is some really bad jokes that they try to land in this movie to the point where you're like, why was that in the final cut of Hatchet? There's actually a scene where they hint at a character that they see in the distance in a boat is known in the town for drinking his own piss. And the movie shows you that character drinking his own piss. Why? That's not funny. Although I like the character of Ben, a negative with him, he's really entertaining when he's with Marcus, but he is a giant pussy when he is by himself. And it's, maybe it's a masculine thing, maybe I don't like characters that have this demasculation about him where he is just so awkward and so whiny and so pathetic and just so weird the way that he interacts with people because he is so low on his own confidence that it's awkward to watch. I know they're trying to really nail down the fact that this character is broken from a relationship that just ended, but god damn. I'm Ben. Mary Beth. Mary Beth, that's a great name. Because it's actually two names, you know. Most people just have one and that's kind of boring. <laughs> ben. But Mary Beth, it's, you know, it's Mary and it's Beth. That's a nice coat. And another negative about the writing, although they do utilize the tropes really well here and there, we also get the baggage of the bad tropes in slasher movies. Of course, you get some shifty to bad acting here and there, mostly in one of the Girls Gone Wild characters. She was actually really bad. Are you sure the number is 911? What else would it be, dumbass? Well, how should I know it's the South? Maybe you have to type in a different area code. And two of the adult characters, the couple that are kind of like the, the older, innocent, really nice, knowledgeable couple, they're kind of quirky and they're kind of comedic and campy in a way, but towards the end of their screen time in the movie, they just got annoying with how hokey that acting was getting, especially when one of them actually gets bit by a crocodile and doesn't really show any signs of fear or pain while this event is happening. He's just like, ah, help me, help me. And I know people will say that's part of 80s horror, but I refuse to accept that. I refuse to accept that bad acting is a requirement. Also along for the ride is characters who make incredibly stupid decisions and incredibly bad moves while running from a killer. And I know that people always have the argument, well, when you're in the moment, you might make bad decisions. It's easy to say when you're looking at a TV screen, bullshit. Some of the decisions that these characters make will make you flat out scream at the television. Why the fuck would you do that? But the biggest thing that annoyed me, which is not really a trope in most horror movies, but it does show up here and there, was it seemed like every single time these characters encountered Victor Crowley, whenever he popped up out of the shadows and took one of them out, they would run away and then they would stop for about five minutes to pause and to talk over things as if Victor Crowley suddenly isn't chasing them anymore. That drove me nuts. 
Oh, oh, all right, all right, we're safe. All right, where's he at? Oh, man. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck, you got any more water? Oh, no? Shit. God damn. All right. Oh, man, I can't believe they well, we lost him back there, man. I was fucked up. Oh, man. God damn, dude, my, my pulse is racing right now. Wait, are we still in danger? For the most part, that's my negatives with Hatchet. I have a few more nitpicks that I want to come in, but honestly, acknowledge the fact that these are nitpicks. These are small criticisms. The way that the movie's filmed, that has this strange kind of real life theater play kind of quality to it. It doesn't feel like a movie in some scenes. And I don't know if that was intended to make the movie feel more real or to feel less real, but it's a little bit distracting for me. They also do this thing over and over again in the movie, which really got weird for me how much they were reusing this same trick. They'd have Victor Crowley kill somebody and then they would cut to a tree and they would throw buckets of blood on the tree to give you the effect like maybe the blood is just spraying all over everything, but it doesn't look like a natural spray of blood. It literally looks like somebody took a bucket of blood and went, Hah! And the last nitpick is I feel like this movie's a little bit mismarketed. Even when you look at the cover or the poster, it says classic American horror, when I would not really classify this movie as straightforward horror. It's much more horror spoof or horror comedy to me. And to me, you need to know that walking into this. If you expect to be scared, or if you just expect to be on the edge of your seat, or tense, or anything during Hatchet, you're gonna be disappointed. Go in knowing that this movie is trying to have fun and you will have fun with it. But to wrap all this up, guys, I honestly did enjoy Hatchet a lot more than I thought I would. I think that it's really interested me in checking out the other two films. I will revisit this movie. I think that it's a good time. I think that it has enough of those classic slasher elements in there to appease a slasher fan like me and to give me something new and fresh to watch besides all the 80s movies that I have completely worn out and will continue to wear out, let's be honest. But there are a lot of flaws with this movie that holds it back from being the classic that it wants to be. It's not on the level of the 80s slashers that it's playing fun of, and it's not even on the level of making Victor Crowley a new horror icon. So if you are a slasher fan, this movie will definitely entertain you. You're gonna have some fun with it. Just go into it expecting to have fun, and I promise you, you will. But save some money, sit at home, check it out on Netflix. So what do you guys think of Hatchet? Do you think this movie is a classic American slasher like it claims to be on the levels of Friday the 13th or Halloween? Or do you think this movie is just good enough? It gives you enough things that you like about the genre to appease a fan of the genre. Put all of your thoughts on Hatchet and even Hatchet 2 and 3 because I'm gonna be checking those out soon down in the comment section below and we'll talk about it. Please like and share this video and hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. If you want to check out some of my social media links, I've got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter down below, and my Patreon page, which is the reason this review exists in the first place, because this is a patron-sponsored review. One of the benefits of being a patron, aside from funding what I do financially and helping the channel grow, is that you can choose either on a one-time basis or a monthly basis, depending on what tier you subscribe to, a topic for a video, be it a movie review, an editorial video, a discussion video, whatever you want to see me talk about, you choose and I will make it happen. So thank you Kelly Farrell for being a patron, for choosing this movie for me to review. And if you guys want to check out some more of my videos, you can check out a few more by clicking right over here.